There are a few things I need to get off my chest. So let's get right into today's episode. Welcome to the What's Eating You podcast. I'm your host, Stephanie, and I'm a psychologist, published author, and public speaker here to educate and validate. Enjoy the show. Welcome back to the What's Eating You podcast. Today's episode is a life update. So I'm going to go through July because what the heck, we are already in the 12th of August. And you know, I love to do monthly reviews. I love to set monthly goals. And I was feeling a little bit frazzled this month because I didn't have a lot of clarity on what I was working on or where I'm going, even though I probably do. But I wanted to do a July overview because it was a really big month. I always feel July is a huge month for some reason. And I really encourage you to take today's episode and do a little review on the month. Prior to whenever you're listening to this, if you're listening to this and it's a month in the future, do a little stock take on the last month. This is something I do regularly, whether I do it informally with friends or my partner or someone I set goals with, or whether I do do it formally in the notes of my phone or in a podcast episode. We are so focused on moving forward all the time. We're so focused on that next thing, that next trip that next goal that we don't actually stop and say, hey, wow, I'm really proud of what I accomplished last month, whether it's professionally or personally. So let's get into it. July highlights. Definitely the biggest highlight for me, well, one of the biggest ones was going to Brisbane to do my interview with Ashley Bynes and Kiara on the Glow and Grow podcast. I love their podcast. I love their content. I've been a huge fan, a follower, <laughs> Ashley Bynes. And even back in the day when she had the booty programs, she used to run boot camps in Melbourne. I actually used to participate as a student and I even helped coach some of them. And I haven't met her before, but to be in this capacity where I'm asked to be interviewed was just something I've always manifested and wanted. And it was such a great experience. I'm pretty sure I did a full episode on that, but the episode should be out soon, but it was amazing. I love the podcast studio. It just felt so good to be in Brisbane and oh, my partner was just amazing. Obviously this episode's going to have personal details about my life. So if you don't want to hear it, just skip on past, but my partner was just incredible. He woke up super early. He said, I'm going to take care of everything today. So you don't have to worry about a thing. Just show up and do your thing. They got breakfast ready. The car was full with petrol. He drove us to Brisbane. He didn't have to do anything that I needed to normally do. And I've just come to realize how nice it is having someone who takes mental load off you. This was going to be another podcast episode about being the CEO in your relationship. And definitely as women and in my past relationships, I thrived on being the CEO. I thrived on getting everything organized and booking all the appointments and doing all the admin. And I just took on this CEO role in my relationship and I was proud of it. But it doesn't leave much room for the other person to do anything but participate. And then what happens is you're driving this car And your partner might be doing the bare minimum to participate. But this relationship, I've been completely different. I have been really upfront and said, listen, I'm not doing admin in this relationship. I'm not doing CEOing unless it's something we decide together. But if there's anything that's to do with our house, our living situation, moving, rental agreements, I really want you to take care of that. I don't want to do it anymore. I literally just want to wake up and be like, oh, okay, what day it is. And I understand, obviously, if you're a parent, this is a lot more challenging, but hopefully you don't have to be the CEO of your relationship because you've got to look after your children as well. Anyways, I'll do a full episode on that because I could talk about that forever. The second highlight was going to Bali. So we did another 10-day edu vacation with the women's fitness academy absolutely love them and what they're about and we spent 10 days in Changu with amazing women there's 36 students on this retreat so it was a biggie but it was wonderful it was very good to go it was very rushed well not rushed but it feels 
as though you've got the whole day, but then the day just goes because you're always talking to people and you're trying to squeeze in your workouts and squeeze in your beauty and squeeze in some sun and you are there to be working and to be present. So you do need to sort of balance that idea of a hybrid working holiday. I don't even know how to take a full holiday. I honestly think that the hybrid life is the best life for me. I just do what I need to do. And then when I get those periods of exhaustion, that's when I really just go into comatose mode and yeah, don't do anything, just switch off. So that was a second highlight. I'm just really proud of that. You know, one of my goals and dreams was to be in Bali doing this type of work. And I feel so lucky and blessed and grateful to be able to do that. And I presented four times and I've done some episodes on those presentations, which you can go back and listen to. The third thing was we got a new place and I am in love. I didn't realize that I've actually moved house eight times in the last two years. So I was living at home pretty much my whole life. I have lived out of home for one year with an ex-partner and then we moved in together when we started dating early 2021. And just through a range of different life circumstances, different needs, we've just sort of moved around and we moved to the Gold Coast just over a year ago. And the house we were in just previously was sort of a temporary one. It wasn't my ideal home. But sometimes you need to live in seasons that aren't your ideal season. All the houses I've been in have been furnished. So as you can imagine, there was no choice in styling or choosing or comfort, which is fine. I like not having that cognitive load during those seasons of my life. But now we've just found somewhere we've really always wanted to live and it is beautiful. I'm really happy and we've been choosing tables and chairs and just getting it done. That's another real highlight. Actually, this would probably be an August highlight, but getting the place in July was a highlight because we've been manifesting living here for quite a long time. Other highlights was I was on In the Driver's Seat, which is going to air in September. So this is a show for people who have quite interesting lives or they've, you know, created something quite fascinating. And in the beginning, I was like, oh, I don't know if I'm right for this fit. I haven't gone through any really huge traumas. And I kind of was invalidating what I've created. And I often do. I don't speak about my online clinic. I have an online psychology clinic, which I started in COVID. And I don't speak about it much. It was just a little project where I thought, oh, I'm going to do online therapy. Why isn't it a thing? It should be a thing. And then COVID happened and things just really took off. And that was just an idea I had that I followed my gut on. And we were one of the first telehealth practices in Australia. So that is huge. And overcoming an eating disorder is huge. So if you ever minimize what you have overcome because you're comparing to other people, don't. Do not, especially with trauma. Trauma can be big trauma, little t trauma, but it's valid no matter what you've gone through in life. So that interview will actually be on Ticker. So if you download the app, it's called Ticker. It's like that live TV that streams all day. That'll air in September, but make sure you check out my Instagram because I'll be giving updates when that airs. Other highlights is I went to Melbourne for a baby reveal. So my partner's brother is having a baby and not him, obviously his wife. And I went to a baby reveal and I was going to do a whole episode on this, but I'll just talk about it. I was really shocked that so many people were asking me when I'm having a baby. I honestly didn't expect it and I'm not offended or upset or anything like that. You know, I am at that age, I'm 36 years old and in the normal society world, people have kids by this time or you're considered like old and dried up. But it's never actually bothered me because I've never felt that cool to, oh crap, I gotta have kids. Oh my gosh. For me, I really wanna be engaged. I really wanna be married. I wanna have an awesome wedding. That's more important to me than having children right now. And I was just surprised. It's almost like people skipped the wedding part or skipped, when are you getting married? You're next. Trust me, I get that at a lot of the Greek gatherings, but. It's kind of like they skipped that part and went straight to the baby part. And I was like, whoa, 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 what do you mean? Let's get a reel on it first. But it does make you think. And do you know what? 
I wasn't offended. I wasn't upset. I actually said, that's a good question. That's a good question. Right now, I don't have an interest in having a child, but maybe in a couple of years. My mum had me at 39 and yeah, I turned out pretty normal and I'm okay. So I think women are having children later and women are conceiving later on in their life. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. So I don't feel pressure by any means. I don't get upset when people ask me. I think it's a really valid question. So if anyone's wondering if I'm having kids, maybe, but not right now. I'm just living my best life. I love that I can wake up at any time I want. I love that I have the freedom to do what I want. I love, and I'm not saying that mums don't have freedom, but obviously you need to be organized to this next level. My sister is a super mom. She has two children. She just gets it done. She trains in the morning. I don't know how she does it, but I just really love my life. And it's, it takes time to craft your ideal life, no matter your circumstances. So yeah, no kids, but I'm definitely manifesting a ring in the next year, possibly next year. So yeah, let's remember I said this when we'd actually have for <laughs> The next highlight is food freedom. Oh my gosh, I have the most beautiful two groups of women doing food freedom at the moment. So one group, majority of them are in Perth, and then the other group, they're all over the place. So it is a global program. I've had people from Bahrain do the program, people who are in Switzerland, in Europe, and I absolutely love that people can join from anywhere in the world because it is such a great program don't want to toot my own horn but I will and the women are just so inspiring in this group they're very community orientated they're chatting in the groups they're supporting each other they're bringing each other up and I guess the biggest misconception is people think when they join a program or a community group that they're the only one feeling this way that oh my gosh I didn't do the exercise this week oh I'm a failure that thought is generic that thought is global that fear of weight gain that fear of trying a different food it's universal and it's not just you and that's why the program is so effective because people have community they have connection they have accountability and implementation support if you do not have this on a consistent basis it's really likely that you will be stuck in the diet cycle binging, purging for the rest of your life. So I'm very grateful for the women who are on this journey with me. And the last highlight, I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about this, but I did a campaign with Seek, Seek the job search website, and it's going to go live at the end of August, but I'm really excited. I love doing partnerships and campaigns. I don't do a lot because I am very picky with who I work with and I also don't really want to go down the influencer route whilst I think I could have done it really well I could have been an influencer and do all that I want to be seen more as an educator or public figure in the space that's where I want to go I think oh my gosh there's so many influencers but how many clinical psychologists that are out there on social media providing psychological support. Do you know what I mean? And influencing is such hard work. If anyone does it, kudos to you. It is hard work to do those partnerships, to negotiate, to post, to get feedback, send your engagement, like you're constantly being evaluated for your online presence. And I feel very lucky that I'm free of that and I can do what I want. But every now and then I do love a good partnership that's not selling a product, but more so delivering education that is useful and valuable for people. So that Seek video will come out at the end of the month and I can't wait to reveal that. So this is a reminder to just stop, take a minute, what song is that? Anyways, doesn't matter. Let's continue. And Reflect on your month. What are you proud of? What were your challenges? I think my challenges for July was I had to make a really difficult choice. I actually had to pull out of a wedding in Bali because I had 
the Ashley Barnes podcast and she was supposed to be going in for brain surgery, I really didn't want to miss that opportunity. And then also because we were possibly moving house, I had to be here. So I did have to pull out of a friend's wedding, but she was so understanding and amazing. So that was a difficult decision. And just reintegrating back into life after Bali, I'm never doing an overnight flight again. I honestly felt as though I died and it took me ages to feel normal again. Only today, one week and one day later, I wake, I wake up at 6 a.m. and I am ready to go. So yeah, just coming back, feeling really tired, scrolling a lot, spending a lot of time watching TV on my phone because we didn't have a TV and just feeling like, Steph, come on, come on, let's give you a week, give you a week, stay in this little bubble that you're in, be kind to yourself, girl, but we need to get out of this. So slowly, slowly, I gave myself grace. I embodied my own progress over perfection and every day was a little bit better. You know, I started waking up at, you know, 7 and then 6.30 and then today was 6. So you have to be kind, but you have to also do it with progressive action. Last night, I didn't want to turn off my phone, but it was 9.30 and I'm like, Steph, you want eight hours of sleep, so phone has to go off. So in summary, I just felt like I wanted to get this little update out. I feel really happy and blessed and lucky and grateful right now for my life. And I'm not saying I feel like this every day. I have my down moments, but I don't stay there. I don't live there. If it's a problem I can solve, I solve it. If it's a thought I can change, I change it. Because a lot of problems we have are in our own head and we create them and we cultivate them and we feed them. So if you've got a problem that's in your head at the moment, solve them. Don't let it just stew. Don't let it build up. Communicate it. If it's with a loved one, speak to a professional. But most of all, don't forget to look after yourself because you are the most important project you will ever work on. I think that's the majority of my updates um, for today. What are my goals for August? I really want to hear 200,000 followers on TikTok. Do you want to know why? Because I'm planning to get a really nice big chocolate cake and I'm really looking forward to that cake. So the minute we hit 200K on TikTok, we'll be getting a big cake to celebrate. So if you're not following on TikTok, please do. I'd love to see you there. I reply to as many comments as I can and I'm just so grateful for the community. Another goal is, oh, I'm creating a new module for Food Freedom that I'm really excited about. This is all about intuitive eating and there's going to be exercise in there to teach you how to eat intuitively, how to find the satisfaction factor in your food, how to eat mindfully, how to enjoy your dining experience. We're doing a big deep dive into that and I'm really excited to bring some fresh new modules. And if you are part of the program, you actually do get all those new modules even if you've finished the program. So completing that module, the TikTok goal, also finalizing our retreat. Yay! If you're still keen on coming on the retreat in October, there are spots available. I might do a whole episode on what to expect with that, but it is in Thailand from the 1st to the 8th of October. Get in touch. It is an all-inclusive retreat. So if you're feeling burnt out, overwhelmed, you need a break or you just want to be inspired and experience a transformation, Mind Food Yuri is my first retreat in partnership with Phuket Cleanse. I cannot wait to bring you it. This retreat I have done twice and it's completely changed my life. It's honestly just helped me tap into new parts of myself, help me discover, help me get clarity of my life and just reset. So if you're not doing Mind Food You, what are you doing? Click the link below and let's book a call and chat about it. I hope you're well. If you enjoy these little life updates, please let me know on Instagram, share the episode, and don't forget to just scroll up and leave a little rating or review. I appreciate you being here and I hope you have the best week ever. Thank you for listening to today's episode. I am truly grateful for you being here. If you got something out of today's show, please take a moment to leave a rating or review. To access more resources or support, check out the show notes below. See you next time.